Test 1, 2, Test 1, 2. Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 28th. This first one was sent in by Brian D. This is, uh, new Google Glass could look like a monocle. I guess Google Glass just filed for a patent. I'll show the picture up here of what it looks like for a monocle type of, I don't know, half glasses, whatever you want to call it. And people are calling it kind of sleek and uh, glorious and words like that. But to me, looking at it, it just looks even dorkier than the glasses they had before. If they're going to continue on with this kind of a development for Google Glass, I would think they would do something like fit them into an ordinary set of glasses frames or have it to where you could have it in a pair of sunglasses, maybe have it to where as a device you could clip it inside the glasses so it didn't look quite so dorky. Uh, to me, this is not development in the right direction really just to make you look even darkier with something stretching from your ear clear around to the, in front of one eye but I guess as it is they haven't given up on them yet even though back in last January I guess they was the last that they actually sold of the old type of Google glasses but yeah what do you guys think do you think Google Glass is pretty much dead and they're gonna have to uh, go another direction I don't see the monocle thing really having any traction I really don't think so this next one is from Bob, 1954 Shadow, Science and Technology. This is insanely fast submarine is made of one molecule. It's a, one, it's a single molecule made out of 244 atoms, and evidently they can get this propeller, this 18 nanometer sized uh, little submarine out of molecules, they can get this propeller spinning at about a million RPMs, and so they can get this thing going at a, for a, a molecular thing, it goes at about one inch per second. I think that's relatively pretty fast. They don't call it fast, but I think it is. And they said this would be the equivalent, especially uh, going through a solution of particles that are similar in size. It would be like a human being walking across the basketball court with a thousand basketballs being thrown at them at the same time. Um, the guy, let's see, I'll just read a little bit of the article here so you get an idea about it. Chemists have created single molecule submarines that contain just 244 atoms and are powered by ultraviolet light and move incredibly fast. With each full revolution, the motor, the motor's tall light propeller gives, moves the sub forward 18 nanometers and with the motors running at more than a million RPM, that translates into speed. Though the sub's top speed amounts to less than one inch per second, that's a breakneck pace in the molecular scale, says James Tour, a professor at Rice University. These are the fastest moving molecules ever seen in solution, he says. I think this thing could really now they said they don't have a they don't have the ability to control the steering right now on it, but if they gain even a limited control of the amount of, of, of a little bit of the steering on it or something like that, uh controlling single molecules like this, it could really easily be something that could uh have some really fantastic uses in the medical realm, I think. And the one thing about this that makes it particularly suitable is this is the first time they've been able to do it with uh, chemicals that were not any kind of a uh, that didn't have any kind of toxic effects or anything like that. I guess in the past they have been able to generate various types of molecular motors, but there was always something toxic about them and the chemicals that had to use and things like that, or the chemical or the um, engine, the little motor itself uh, was not something that was really compatible with human beings and human tissue. So now that they've done it uh, in this particular way, it could end up being something useful in the future. And this next one was sent to me by my friend Bandit Nev, Motorcycle.com. Cena unveils smart helmet with noise control. This is, uh, they have a video too you can watch here, but what it is is it's not a communication device so much as just a system, kind of like having a Bose noise canceling headphones built into your helmet. It's got the ear cups, it's got the noise canceling circuitry, but the thing to me that really makes it even more useful than that is it's got a little button on the outside where you can tap it and you can hear the outside ambient noise. So in other words, when you pull up next to somebody or pull up next to another motorcyclist that you're riding with, you tap the little button on the outside and you're able to hear clearly outside the helmet. So no having to raise your visor and yell at the other person and hoping they can hear you, that's, that's always been a problem with me and helmets too. Now, one kind of downside of it is the price is going to be not really uh, super inexpensive. It's going to be somewhere in the range of 600 to $800 they say this thing is going to run. So have to have a little bit extra pocket change to afford this, but I'm sure the quality is going to be there. I mean, Cena doesn't tend to build really cheapy, cheapy stuff, so if it's something in a possibility you're looking for and you're willing to spend a little extra for a helmet, it might be something in the future if you ride motorcycles. 
And this is the last one I'm going to do today. This is from Discovery News. Mars Moon Phobos is double doomed. I guess uh, some of you know that if, if you follow things on Mars, you know the moon Phobos is slowly, every century or so like that, it's, it's moving in a foot or two closer to Mars, and eventually they thought it was going to crash. Well, now they're thinking that it may not even get that far along. It may actually be, be uh, being tugged by gravity so much it's actually being stretched, and what may happen is it may actually just basically stretch apart and, and fall apart in orbit before it even hits the ground. So what they're thinking is... Uh, it could be that Mars may end up having a little bit of a ring left over when the planet disintegrates. Right now it's uh, the closest moon to any planet. It's 5,800 miles above the Martian surface, but because of this gravity tug and because of the stretch marks they're seeing on it, they think uh, it's not very long on this life. Evidently the inside of it isn't even holding together as well as the outside is. I guess the outside is the strongest part, so once the outside gives way, the inside is just going to totally fly apart. And it's just going to be debris circling around Mars. They're hoping... And I don't really even understand about this, but they say they're hoping to actually send some kind of uh, uh, missions to the, the moon Phobos first as a, a venture before they... Well, I'll just read it. Scientists have many questions about Phobos and its sister moon, Deimos, both of which may have a captured asteroid. NASA and other agencies are looking at missions to Phobos as a stepping stone to human missions to Mars. I hope they're talking about robotic missions and probe missions without human beings because to send a human being all the way to Phobos and not land on Mars and send them all the way back seems to be a waste of time and money. So I'm hoping that's what they're talking about, although they don't really get specific into this. And, uh, so anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. 